And welcome to Adobe APAC Live. My name is Flynn, and I'm really delighted to be the host this afternoon. And I'm here with Jason Grant. How are you doing? Um, I'm very well, thank you. I'm delighted to be the, uh, the guest. Yeah, so <laughs> regular watchers of the live stream uh, might recognize Jason. Jason has hosted several of the live streams to date. Now I get to yes. host. Wonderful. And you need to do all the work. <laughs> yeah, true, true. <laughs> but it's, uh, it's, it's all new updates, all fancy updates, so um, it's not so much work. Yeah, exactly. True, true, true. Um, so, so welcome everybody for coming along. And we have a chat uh, panel, so you can engage with us. You can ask all sorts of questions. We feel like there's going to be quite a few questions this time. We're going to cover a lot of apps, a lot of a lot of kind of little tips and tricks. Um, and so you can log in and ask questions, say hello, uh, just by using your Adobe ID in the top right hand corner. If you are at AdobeAPACLive.com. Uh, if, you're, if you're at YouTube, jump over to Adobe APAC Live to engage in the chat room. Um, so before we get started, how yep. about a little bit of a background about who you are and what you do? Absolutely. Um, so my background, deep, deep background, is graphic design. So I came through design, um, slowly worked my way up to, to a certain level of um, up through you know design management and so forth. Um, and now I'm moving over to Adobe for about a year and a half. And from there, we basically so we interact with customers such as people out there, yeah. um, and try and help show them some efficiencies and some of the, the the you know nice new things that have come through in the uh, software because it's I think it's quite hard to keep abreast of everything only because of mm. you know you've been slammed by deadlines you've been slammed by everything um, so. I'd like to say it's very hard to you know put your head up and have a look around and see what's available because mm. there, there might be things that can actually help with your workflow. So that's where we sort of try and come in and help in that aspect. It's one of those funny things, isn't it? It's hard to find <laughs> the time to find the things that can save you time. Yes, true. Yeah, true. so you need those little excuses. So hopefully today we can show you something that will save you some time and you can go have an extra cup of coffee or something. Excellent. Yes. Okay, cool. Um, and so one of the other reasons that we thought we'd get Jason in and kind of cover a lot of these updates is there's been a lot um, fairly recently. Yep. And a lot of that, the catalyst of a lot of that, has been um, Adobe Max, mm. um, which we thought maybe maybe you could tell us a little bit more about what Adobe Max is um, and why all the updates kind of tend to happen around that time. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, we, we do push out a lot of updates through the year um, across all the apps. Um, but, yeah, they do just announce some newer ones that come through at Max. So Max is is basically the, the um, in America they have, you know, this year they had about 14,000 creatives uh, conjugate into Los Angeles um, mm. at the convention center. Um, and then here they, not only do they do like sneaks, which is always a really fun sort of um, episode, yeah. um, but they also show some of the newest apps that are available. So there are a couple of new ones with Project Rush, or sorry, Premier Rush, it's mm. out of, project phase, but they also talked about Project Aero. So there's all these new things that do come through. And plus, on the base of that, we've also got all, from all the new tools that you do have available, there's also updates that come through out of that. Yeah. So yeah, it's a very exciting time, um, you know, just to be there, just to sit there and talk to people, you know, again, that amount of people, mm. just talk and design and, you know, it just the everything, like the screens are Everyone amazing. nerds out just, a lot as yeah. well. Oh, yeah, it, it is fun. I, yeah, I hundred percent. Look at you! I love that grin. You're still going. You so you, you obviously got to go. I was lucky enough to go as well. Yes. Um, so I had a really had a really great time, and hopefully we'll bring back some of that excitement yep. um, back here. Um, so we actually have a video clip which kind of gives you a good a good kind of snapshot mm -hmm. at some of the like a very exciting version of of these updates. Yeah. So maybe we'll roll over to that. Watch it on the news, what you gonna do? I could hit refresh and forget. Used to keep it cool.
pretty amazing stuff. Oh, amazing, yeah. It was, yeah. So today we're gonna show a few things that you actually saw in that as well. So that's really mm. good. But yeah, so much stuff. It's just, yeah. Give me more, sort of. Yeah, absolutely. All right, great. Well, um, so if you're just joining us in the last little bit, because I noticed quite a few more people jumping in. Um, where we have a chat room to the right hand side of your screen and you can log in with your Adobe ID, ask us questions. We're gonna get under the hood with Jason Grant. And what do you think? Should we start in Photoshop? Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, we can start there. Um, today we're, we're gonna go through, say, the big three. Okay. Um, so your Photoshop, Illustrator, and InDesign. Mm -hmm. um, and depending on time, we might dive into a couple of other apps. Um, cool. You know, see what the audience wants, really. Okay. Yeah. Great, yeah, so just let us know in the chat um, which app you want us to cover or if there's anything particular you want us to cover. Um, but we're gonna show you some new uh, stuff right now. Yeah. Um, so first up, I'm gonna jump over to Photoshop. Um, and if we just wanna, we, we can move over to screens. Um, mm -hmm. But what you'll see here is I'm gonna push mainly on the, the main new highlights. So there is a lot more available in, in some of the new updates and so forth. But I just wanna focus on, say, about five or six highlights per app. Okay. So here straight up, um, through most of your apps now, the home screen, um, as you can sort of see here, so all your welcome screen, um, but here you've got your home screen. Um, they've put a lot more effort in it. It does have your, your, you know, your most recent file list as well. Mm -hmm. um, but if you go to your learn, a lot of the stuff that we talk about, and there's a lot of new stuff always coming through, that's always available here. So they have a lot of tutorials and just tips and tricks to actually you know, pick up your skill level. Um, additionally, if you have the desktop app um, where you can update all your apps and so forth, um, you got to hear learn as well. So here you can learn new things and you can you know filter it by whatever app you find most relevant. Great. So some of the things we're going to talk about today, there might be a couple of little tutorials on there as well. So if yeah. you miss something or you want to slow some things down, go into more detail, check it out. There's there's a plethora of so many so many different things there. Yeah, absolutely, um, and it, and it's really good. So um, I thought I would dive straight into. I might, I think, because this one was actually shown during that video. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, so poor butterfly. Oh, no. um, so what we're going to do here, um, we have a new feature. Everyone will be aware of content aware fill. Mm -hmm. um, so now here we actually have um, improved that sort of um, that process. So if I just went in to fix our butterfly. Um, you know, I just want to select around that area. So typically with, with Content Aware, it's going to pull in the pixels and, and that from the surrounding area. Now we can actually get a lot more detailed into that and mm -hmm. actually like specify what areas that they're pulling the pixels from. Okay. So, um, and we have some new options around that as well. So here I've selected the, the damage part, but we can fix that. So um, go down into your edit menu and down to Content Aware Fill. So it's where you start, um, and you're going to see here straight up. It's going to, I, I, sorry, it's going to open up two windows available. So on the left side is showing you with the green area. It's actually showing you what pixels have been selected. Okay. On the right side, it's going to give you a preview of the image that's going to come through. So if we go here, um, I think you know it's done a pretty decent job on the right, um, but you want to go in a bit more detail, and you can actually, if you were going to retouch that. You would typically maybe select the left side, copy it over, reflect onto the it, right. horizontal yeah. flip sort of thing. Yeah, yeah, 100%. You know, and that's a logical way to do it. Um, this one is just pulling in the pixels, and that's why it's got that little smudgy sort of area in the middle. So here I would go back onto the left side, um, and I just want to paint out some more of that space here. So you can see here, I'm going to add that whole wing in because what I'm going to do is go to move over to my right panel on the far right, and um, here we've got some options available. So here you can just see the, the sampling options on what areas we're picking. Um, but if you go down further, there's color adaption. So you can always play around with these different ones. So I'm just sticking to the, the standard one, but you will see here when I hit high, it will come through soon. Um, so here, you know, it does a little thing. I'll just turn that off, go back to default. Um, you can see the slight difference mm. that it does, I yeah. think. Um, so it's a kind of a um, <coughs> test to try it, yeah. see, play, have a bit of a play around, see what works. Yeah, th this one is, is quite a, it's a, maybe a more simpler way to actually do it. Yeah. But um, I think if you're going to do content aware, and most retouches typically start with a content aware if they're mm. going to delete anything. So it's always a good way to start. Okay. Um, so we just jump back in. 
Um, you got rota rotation adaption as well, so you can just rotate around it and move the pixels around a bit better um, if need be. Um, but we sort of already alluded to this. We're going to pull over from the left side and right. hit the mirror option, and you're going to see straight away, boom, it almost does the, what we would have done in a retouch sort of environment, mm. but does it straight away. To the left of that, you've got the scale option, and you can sort of see here, um, scale option is really good if you're doing something with a repeatable pattern. So you can see here, they, they actually did the example of the bricks. Mm. Um, if you're going to do content aware, it wouldn't do that smooth. It does it, as you can see now, but with scale option, it does it a lot more smoother. So wow. there's a lot of, um, and I'm going to say this straight up, so there's a lot of um, artificial intelligence and machine learning. Mm -hmm. um, what we call is um, Adobe Sensei. Sensei, Sensei. Mm. yes. Um, and a lot of that is to help minimize all that manual aspects of design. So it lets you get this sort of stuff out of the way so you can do the more fun stuff and get creative. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So. We're going to see a bit of that, aren't we, with some of these sort of time-saving bits of technology yes. that can kind of yeah. get us onto the, the good bits, which is creating things, thinking of new ideas, all that yeah. sort of stuff. Yeah, drinking coffee, all drinking, that stuff. <laughs> drinking coffee, going for walks. Yeah. yeah. Um, so here, and then when it comes down to the output, um, I can output it straight into my layer if I want. But right. you know, being a you know diligent sort of a retoucher, I would make it a new layer, so it's a non-destructive workflow. Non-destructive workflow. We love that here. Yes. Yeah. Perfect. So, oh, and then here we come through. So straight up, you see here. So here's my layer. I've come through. If I just move him around, um, you can see that there's that bit that was uh, done through that content aware fill. Mm. Um, and it's done in a new layer. So this is one of the, the newest updates, mm -hmm. um, and I think it's quite good. So it's, um, cool. yeah, have a go, have a play. Again, you get to specify what pixels are, are being used in that content aware environment. Great, so, very cool. So that was the first one out of the box. Um, so next I might jump over to here, a blank screen. Um, what I would like to show here, and this was available last year. So. Um, but it was sort of hidden away in, tech, in, in the preferences under mm -hmm. technology previews. Um, now it has come out um, in full glory. Um, it has here, it's basically symmetry drawing. Right. So there's a lot of options available. Um, you can sort of see here. They added two extra ones um, now. So you got radial um, as well as mandala. I'm hoping I'm saying that right. Mm -hmm. um, so I have already selected the mandala option. Here I can just specify how many segments I want, hit OK, and there you get that option available. So I'm going to use this, and you'll see what happens. Um, I have, say, little um, illustrative skills, but I'm hoping I can give you a little wow <laughs> at the end. So, um, <coughs> excuse me. So we're, we're going to hit, hit the brush option. Um, I just want to highlight as well. So you have flow up the top, um, as well as smoothing. Smoothing is a good one to stop that jaggedness right. when you're you're drawing with a pen mm. or a brush. Um, so think of smoothing as like, at the moment I got it around 50%, but think of it as like a speedboat with a water skier. The speedboat will pull the water skier around, so it does oh, it in a smooth arc. That is a really nice analogy. That's it. I, I love I it. have used it. Um, so here <laughs> we're, we're, we're going to um, go into our brushes. Um, Good thing to know if you haven't already, um, get more brushes, go to this one, have a look at it, open it up. Um, Kyle T. Webster has, there's a hell of a lot of um, brushes available yeah. for you to use. Um, and also from the Max, they had a lot of sessions available. Mm -hmm. um, and there was one done by Kyle T. Webster as well, so you can actually right. view that online. So that's a good good thing to actually view. And so yeah, just for those that might be joining us a little bit later, so yeah, Adobe, Adobe Max was an event that happened. There's all sorts of sessions and all of that content <coughs> is online for free. Um, and so we'll share that link with you. Yeah. Um, so you can check it all out in your in your own time. Yes. Um, and Carl T. Webster now works with for Adobe with Adobe, um, and all of his brushes. Um, this set has been created. They're all part of Photoshop. Yes. Yeah. Which is uh, pretty amazing. Yeah. There's there's any, everything from Magna. Like there's half tone. There's oh yeah yeah. It's a illustrator's dream. I would say. Yeah. Um, it's great fun. Yeah. Um, okay. Cool. So I'm just gonna pick out. I picked out a nice. Lime green, um, lime never, green. <laughs> never, never, never fails. Um, so here, I'm just going to do some just quick drawing. So here, you can actually see how that symmetry aspect works. Um, mm. So it's quite simple. I might just reduce this a little bit more. So again, this is quite simple and quick. Um, I'm doing it, but you can see how it's doing it in the segments. Yeah. If you're 
a bit more artistic than myself. I'm sure you could do a hell of a lot better, but um, if I just added in another color, lime green and pink always works. Um, but you can see here how I can just add this, um, add a bit more texture, have a bit more fun through this, um, and then pull this out. Um, wow, it's quite psychedelic. Yes, yes. <laughs> it gives a little flashback. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you know, that, that was done really quickly. Um, I mean, if you put a bit more time and effort, if you had any mm. symmetrical drawings, mm. this is where you would have a bit more fun. I mean, this is just with the trackpad as well, you know, very, very quickly. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So yeah, if, if I could do that in 30 seconds, then you guys could, you know, make the magic in mm. 40 seconds. It's very so, cool. Yeah. Uh, so that's symmetry. Um, again, really well, well, you know, really great tool to have um, for illustrators and so forth. So it, it's a good option. Um, and and so that symmetry tool was around in a previous update, but it was actually kind of hidden. You had to turn it on, yeah. I think, because I think we had we did have someone on that was um, one of the illustrators was mentioning it, and they did mention that you had to kind of dig in a little bit to yeah. find it. But now it's just out. Yeah, out and available. absolutely. Yeah. So I suppose it was just that and that that just testing out, seeing how it works and. Um, you know, now they've got it in a good space, so we, we've put it out forefront, um, so you can play with it a lot more. And I, I can only see that expanding. Okay. Um, okay, so we'll move over to, that was our first one. Um, I think the next one we want to jump in is our framing tool. So what we have here is, um, so if typically, you know, with Photoshop we've got this mock-up uh, website, um, <clears throat> and here, you know, you will throw in a lot of imagery and so forth. Um, to you know, populate that website mm -hmm. out. Um, so here you may have used smart objects, or you might use mask, or you know, different ways to actually um, put the images into your layout. Yeah. Um, so we've got the framing tool now available. Um, so if I just give a quick example, so that works here. So I've hit the framing tool on the left. Um, from now, I can just drag in. I might just grab one of my from my libraries. I have a Prism website. So this is my library that I use just for this sort of website, mm -hmm. um, and it has all food, photography, and so forth. Um, so I will just drag that in. Um, straight away, it's going to pull that image into that, that framing tool. So you can do mm. boxes as well as um, ellipses. Um, that's all available. And I'll also show you how you can convert it from uh, fonts and copy as well. So, cool. um, But here, you're just pulling in different copy. Um, you just, you know, like again, design is always an iterative approach. So, you know, you just need to practice and put, put stuff in and see what works mm. and what doesn't. Um, and you'll know it. You always know that. That, so that, behaves, that, that behaves a lot more like InDesign would in yeah. a way with the frame tool and everything like yeah, that. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Um, there is another good thing that has also happened. So if I'm going to hit Command T, so I just want to do a transform. Um, here, so like here I can easily move this around. Also, you know, scale this up or down. Um, I don't know if anyone saw this, but when you scale now, whoops, when you scale now you can, you don't need to hold the, um, the shift to right. actually keep the proportion. It's like, why weren't we doing it? If I do hold the shift, it actually then goes, reverts back to what we knew of. Mm. Um, and then it lets you um, take it out of proportion. So Decades of training holding down that shift oh, button. I am still trying to adjust to that sort of uh, yeah. that little uh, shortcut or that little uh, workflow. Um, so it'll be lo good long term once we, once we break it, that break that habit. Oh, absolutely. So, but yeah, you, you'll get used to it. Um, you know, everyone gets quite adaptive to how that, how we have to adapt. Yeah, um, for or sure. how, how we have to design. So that's good. So here, there's a few different layouts here, so I can just throw in different options available, see what works. The same with copy. So we've got copy that we've converted to a frame. Mm. Um, you know, I can always, if I hold down Control and Command, um, I can highlight the layer, go in, and then I can always scale that up or not, uh, depending that on how I want. That was Control and Command to do that? that was yes, pretty, Control, that was Command. Um, that highlights the layers. Because when you're getting into deep, oops, um, when you get deep, you have, a like you know, you can actually see the whole, even the the, the, the layer structure above it. Mm. Um, so you can actually go down to however granular you want to. Mm. Um, but you know, bigger layouts and all that, you're gonna you get lost in the layer panel on the left. Um, so this is a good way to just quickly get to that sort of layer. Very cool. Um, but yeah, it's I think a handy tip. Like here, we have M. I can go to that. Um, if I want, I can convert this to a frame straight up. It's going to tell me, and then you can actually see how it started to already um, 
you know, put that object in there and I can move mm. it around. Oh, it's just so quick, so Stop much faster than it used shift. to be. Yeah. Yes. Oh, it's a, yeah, it's so it's so good. Like, yeah, you know, actually, I'll put that in, um, and then you can actually see what works and what doesn't. So yeah, just much, much, much faster. Um, so when you put a new image in, does it does it get rid of the old image, or yep. are they going on top of each other? No, yeah. no, it does replace the image, which is yeah, good because your layers. Otherwise, just, yeah, far size. <laughs> yeah, but you have a two gigabyte PSD before you know it. I've done that before. <laughs> yeah. Um, another good thing, and I think this one got the biggest yell out of everything. Let's just put this in context that there are <laughs> there are ten to fourteen thousand people depending on on who you listen to. They're like sitting in the audience. Yeah. Um, as you were saying, you're in a room full of all these creators that have um, you know built careers on using these tools, creating yeah. these tools, all sorts of stuff. Um, and yeah, it's a, it was quite a quite a nerd out that I think we all had um, when people are demoing these these small changes, but people just think about how this impacts their lives. So, so yeah, what yeah. was this feature? So this, <laughs> it's going to seem so simple, right. um, but you know, before like you, you think um, before you had the, the command Z to un the undo function, um, you would always go back and forth. You know, does it look good now? Does it before look better, you know, yeah. back for unzip, unzip. Um, people were like, well, why doesn't it work the same as it does in Illustrator and InDesign and every other tool mm. available? So now it does. And you can actually go back, uh, command Z, command Sorry. Z, go back. Infinitely and always, going back, yeah. Yeah, because you would always have that history panel open. Yeah, you had to, yeah. yeah. So you're losing that screen real estate, which is so important these days because, mm. I mean, we were, we were talking about it before, for the <laughs> show, I mean, we're just constantly on laptops. We're such, yep. so mobile now. Um, co-sharing, I'm sure lots of students yeah. are working on laptops a lot of the time as well. Um, that screen real estate is so important. Um, we're going to talk a little bit more yeah. about active panels and stuff, which is a similar sort of um, solution to that. But yeah, it's just, it's it's so good. Even just getting rid of a small little panel can really just open things up. Yeah, yeah 100%. Yeah. Like you'll see now, um, again, um, InDesign, Illustrator, and Photoshop, uh, the properties panel, and this will be something we yeah. touched on and which you sort of alluded to, um, how much that's contextual to what you're actually working on, mm -hmm. um, and it's going to show up in the properties panel now. So that's cool. just here on the right. Um, you might have noticed that the new color panel, again, that's a bit more consistent with that sort of color illustrative workflow as well, so that's something that also is new, mm -hmm. um, but that's also available as well. Great. Um, Okay, I might just jump over. So I am going to show everyone something that has been done before as well. So um, just a just a quick little shout out before we jump into the next one. Um, just let you guys know if you have any questions about anything that we're doing so far, feel free to to jump in there, ask away, yes. um, and we'll continue to we'll continue to move on unless unless there's any questions. But but yeah, it's a safe space. Um, there's no dumb questions here. Um, a lot of this stuff is new to me. So if you want me to ask it, um, yeah, go for it. Just let us know in the chat. Okay, yeah, yeah, no, please ask any question that you may have. More than happy to try and answer them. Yeah. Um, okay, so I'm going to just jump over here. So I think one thing that a lot of um, people in Photoshop do, they like to uh, deep etch out um, certain objects and re change the background or. Do they like to deep etch or do we have to <laughs> deep etch? Um, it's a necessity, I would right. say. Yeah. Um, we do like to manufacture that perfect environment, mm -hmm. and that's where Photoshop and retouch and um, helps facilitate that. So um, there is a way that you can actually do that a lot easier now. Um, so this has been about. Um, so sorry for those who already know this, but hopefully there's a few people that haven't seen this before. Mm. Um, if you go to select, um, now you can go down to subject. So you can sort of see here we've got the black and white subject. Um, you can see around her shoulder and so forth where the colors are quite similar. So as long as there's a decent depth of field, mm. um, this function should work well. So. Here we hit subject, um, and then hopefully you're going to see our marching ants come up soon, um, and they're going to show the area that actually has highlighted around the, our subject. Right. So there you can actually see now. Um, and it has done a pretty good job. So mm. again, trying to get you, I don't know how far you want to say this is 80%, 90%. Um, I'll leave it up to you. Um, but yeah, it gets you a long way there. So like yeah. a quick workflow, and there's no reason why you can't turn these into actions. Um, as right. well, so that way again to help speed up your workflow. Even droplets is another great thing where you mm. put a little droplet on the desktop, and you can drag images onto onto that. So that that's a good little hack. Ooh, I don't know that one. Maybe yeah. we'll, maybe we'll cover that at yeah. a, another time. Yeah, no problem. Do you guys know about droplets? I didn't know about droplets. Yeah, um, yeah, we saw a little bit for those that <coughs> tuned into the Ben Marriott. Uh, he had a couple of um, actions that he'd saved. 
think. Yeah, to no, yeah, huge. Anything repetitive, you should really make make sure it's in action. Yeah, worth And then time. you can do a batch, yeah. you know, automation and all that so forth. Mm. Um, cool. Okay, so once we've done this, um, select and mask is where I will go next, and that will be more to just get that finer detail around the hair and maybe just fix up this little bit here. So. Um, again, you can see here we get the, the ruby leaf. So what did you press just then to have to That was, that? Um, I'll just redo that. Um, so you got the marquee mm -hmm. right up on the top, yep. select the mask. Okay, select the mask. Yeah, you'd be surprised and like happened to me for years, you know, you will have so many buttons under your, uh, straight under your nose um, mm. and you just wouldn't click them or you, you know, you just go through your workflow. So. You know, it's good just to have a play, just to see what happens. Um, mm. But you know, if time permits. So I'm ho hopefully I'm showing you some time short shortcuts. Shortcuts, yeah. cool. Yeah. Um, okay, so we're going to go in and just use in here on the left. So you got your you got quick selection tools. Um, you got your direct selection tools and 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 that the refined brush, refined edge brush tool um, is the one I want to use um, on the right side. There are all amount of tools that you can actually start to fine tune it and get get a bit more deeper. But if I just go in and I just want to do this quickly so we can hurry up onto some more um, updates. Mm -hmm. But you can sort of see how it's picking out the black hair and it's going into some of the grey areas as well. Can we see how that's coming yeah, through? Yeah, you can start seeing the change, yeah. Yeah. So here, I think if we have a look through her hair, you can actually see it coming back. Um, now we're going down, and it's actually sort of so it is picking out what what will be background and what mm. wouldn't be. Um, now this is a bit deeper, so I'm just going to do this quickly um, and then go back under her chin. So okay, that's just done very quickly. Um, again, you could always go down and refine that a lot further. Um, mm. That was just basically the default settings. So we hit that up, and we can actually we can push this to a layer. Um, at the moment, I've outputted this as a selection, so I would turn this into a mask. Um, and now I'm just going to put, I'm going to do the atypical double exposure effect um, because I think it's, and people out there can always correct me if this is um, if this is still relevant or if this is a, a design fad that has moved on. <laughs> so <laughs> things come and go very quickly. Um, so I've added in my background, I'm going to hit my option key in Mac and I'm going to just mask that down to the layer below. So it's using that mask. Now one of these updates that we're finally going to get to, um, I wish I could move out of the way. Um, as you sort of cycle through now, um, previously you would hit dissolve, have a look how that was, hit darken, multiply. Now mm -hmm. it does a live preview. So you can sort of see as I go down through the options, it is giving you that live preview, so you can actually see it instantaneously, um, and then you can see what would work or not in your layout. Yeah, I used to just click multiply because I just used to not know what anything else was doing. Might have burnt it a couple of times, but that was it. Just multiply, yep, that looks great. Um, for those that have used these before, you obviously you have to select it, see what it looks like, then go back in, you know, click it again, yeah. select it again. This is much faster. Yeah, and then maybe even open up the history panel and go all mm. the way back up to multiply. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so I think this is huge difference. Um, it's a great way to do it. Um, it's a lot more simpler. Uh, so again, you know, to get that perfect texture and so forth, that this would make or break a layout. You know, if I move this around, um, there's all a matter of ways that you can actually make this look good um, with you know little or zero effort. Very cool. Um, but yeah, I think that's a really good update, um, really worth seeing. Mm. Um, oh, I will quickly sneak off and I'm going to just do, um, this is something we're going to show again in Illustrator soon, mm -hmm. um, but some people are not aware of this, is it's the puppet warp function that you have in Photoshop. So mm. I thought I would just quickly highlight this. So here you pin certain aspects. If you're going to do slight edits to a Photoshop image, um, I think using this option is a lot more easier um, and then that way I think I've only moved the mask unfortunately um, that way it would actually do like you know if you wanted to move the arm or something just a fraction without merging the uh, you know distorting the pixels and so forth mm. this is a great option to do so if I can move this okay I think I'm playing with a mask unfortunately but um, you get the gist I will mm. show you again in um, Illustrator how that works as well okay cool um, 
Okay, uh, so I thought after this we're going to dive into InDesign. Yeah, let's do it. Yeah, yeah, excellent. So, um, so maybe just a recap of what what we just did then yep. um, in Photoshop. So we checked out the symmetry. Yep. Symmetry um, tool. Yeah, the symmetry tool. Mm -hmm. We have the framing tool as well. Yep. Um, we also went through the uh, content aware fill. Yeah. Um, and then lastly, the the live preview of the layers. Cool. Yeah. Perfect. If anyone wants any sort of clarification on any of those, let us know. Yeah. So we're going to switch across now over to InDesign. True. Um, yeah, we'll show some of the new things. So there's, say, I think there's a, there's a big four that have come through with this. Um, my favorite, and I can imagine all workflows who a lot of designers, layout designers have done, um, when they're in um, InDesign, you would push out, once you've you finalized your layout, mm. you're going to push out a PDF. Yeah. So um, send it to the client, your yep. teacher. Yeah, yeah, you're going to forward it on. Um, and then from that PDF, they would either comment and feedback on. Yep. And then they would forward that back. Mm -hmm. um, I would always, you know, I, I won't always, but um, it happened happened a few times was that um, you would miss some of the comments or, you know, you just, there, there might be a whole swave. And it might be like a very small comment, like, okay, delete a comma or so forth. Mm. You could actually miss that. So you would mm. have them both up. Both at the same time. I used to I used to have to print the PDF oh, and then t and then cross out any change I made after I made the change. So very diligent. Yeah, so. I know, but you know it's the only way to make sure that you've actually got it because yes. uh, you know as I think you were getting getting to even just missing a comma or spelling God forbid spelling spelling the client's name wrong uh, yes. on a uh, annual report. Yeah, uh, get get the brand wrong or yeah yeah if you would exactly. Um, yeah. So there's you know even small changes are very very important. 100%. Mm. So now we have um, a new option, and this sounds so logical in a way, is that, as you can sort of see here, if I go down, import PDF comments. So okay. now from this PDF, I have a PDF, I can import the comments directly into InDesign and tick them off as I go through. Right. So under file, right down here, import PDF comments. There is also this panel here, PDF comments. Okay. Where you can actually Two go ways through. To get there. Yep. Um, and that would open up this. So here, mm -hmm. you can sort of see here. So you see this panel. Um, again, I can pull this. So here is my my feedback file. Um, as you can see here, it's not too bad. Mm -hmm. um, I have had worse. Okay. <laughs> um, but this one's is all right. So you all can right. see there's a few um, questions that the client has here. Um, so once you're okay with that, I would import this in. And straight away, you can actually see how it does it, embeds it straight into um, in design, right? So it just kind of comes in almost like it's a second layer. Yeah. That you can that you can take a look at. Okay. Cool. Um, yeah, and like again, it's going to uh, eliminate any errors that could actually happen between mm. that feedback process. Um, so here, straight up, I hit the first one. You can see the blue box come up, and it highlights which area I'm talking about. Um, I can OK this or not. So I have the ability to tick it. So mark resolved. Mm. So yep, I'm happy with it. You know, you can delete it if you don't like the comment. Um, really up to you. Um, verify model release. Yes, 100% verified. Try surf and meeting text in color. So here you can play around with different colors. Um, if I have tried it, I would just tick it off. Um, it all goes all the way down to the bottom. Um, ticking as I go, because I think my layout has been perfect the first time. <laughs> <laughs> um, but here, this is where I think it really comes into fruition is that you have with text changes, it's going to highlight the text change. And if you press accept, it will actually pull that straight in. So, you know. So that pulls it in and just places it in the font how you've typeset it. Exactly. All that sort of stuff. Wow, it's pretty so great. So here you've got March 30. Uh, we want to change that to April 29. Mm. Um, and then we accept that and it will actually pull that straight in. So, you know, if you have paragraphs of text and so forth, yeah. this is going to change heats. And you know. yeah, send it to your copywriters, get them to make all the changes, <laughs> yes. send it back. Um, that's pretty amazing. Something I really like about that tool that I can see so much potential in is is also just tracking the changes that you make across versions. Yeah. Um, you know, with you and a client or you with a team, you with other departments in an organization, um, you could potentially pass that on to uh, a, de a designer at a company or a client at a company. And that PDF could even go to somebody else, mm. like the CEO, and then come back to that point of contact and then come back to you. Yeah. Um, and it just means that you're ticking it off, being really diligent about it, and there's a bit of a history there, so you could just keep that. Yeah, right? yeah, absolutely. Yeah, um, yeah I think it's it's really 
you know, it, it's an important thing to have um, yeah. because, you know, again, design does go through a lot of um, changes and everyone wants to make sure it's right mm-hmm. um, and to involve all them stakeholders yeah. um, and then, you know, to make sure that you've ticked every aspect and gone through it and uh, contemplated their change mm. um, is, is quite important. So. Yeah, absolutely. Useful tip. I like it. Um, yeah, that's a great update. Um, the next one we have here is what we want to say if those who were familiar with maybe liquid layouts. Mm-hmm. Um, so here is something that we have done and I'm sure everyone has gone through this and started a design job and maybe done this at say the wrong size or right. the size has changed or you had to do two odd adaptions or so forth. Mm-hmm. Um, this can happen quite a lot. Um, what you would have done before was say we go to our document setup. Um, okay, just for example, for this one, we're going to say okay, it should have been vertical. Um, you can quickly see what's going to happen. Yeah. But um, if I just hit OK, this would actually just just change the actual page size, but all the content in that hasn't changed at all. And this this is very painful for me to watch because I've done exactly <laughs> this before, where I think I designed something in A4 and it needed to be kind of A3, but you know slightly different dimensions to A3. Um, and it was an incredibly painful process because you have to yeah. redo everything. Absolutely, yeah. every every little aspect. So now, um, from document setup, you could actually see where it was highlighted in blue, where where you could have done it as well. You've got here adjustment, adjust layout as well. Mm-hmm. So um, this is the new function available. So if I'm hitting landscape again, I can go through, change all the, the margins if I need be. Um, I have the option to adjust font size in proportion. Mm-hmm. Um, you can also do that. Um, adjust lock content or whatever. So um, now when we hit OK, when we hit OK, you can actually see um, that the layout mm. has done everything. So again, this is using that Adobe Sensei that we touched on earlier. Yeah. Um, it's pulled everything in content and actually done a very good job with that layout, I think. Um, you can see little areas here where you know maybe that um, wouldn't be where you would place it. You know you may center that, that option. Centered, yeah. But um, there is it's taken out a lot of that work that you know previously would have been quite a manual task. It's exactly what I was going to use was manual as well. Like I'm just you know seeing there goes your afternoon. You know <laughs> <laughs> staring at a screen and you're kind of uh, wrong moving size. everything again. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so that's a, that's a, that's a great one. Um, we've got a question from Daniela about um, one of the last tip. I um, just can't seem to import the PDF comments function on CC in InDesign. Do you need us to update the software or something like that? Yeah, so this would have been through the last um, update that yep. would have come through. Um, so as long as you're on CC 2019, then you have that option. So if you okay. do have an app panel, um, it may come through here. Uh, it depends on your environment, your, mm. your company environment, or if you're a freelancer. Um, but yeah, that, that will have come through with the, um, the update. And you don't need to export the original from InDesign in any particular way, you just export it as yep. a, a normal PDF? Yeah, so it's just the comments that have been put into mm-hmm. that um, PDF, and yep. then you can import that back, back into it. Okay. So I'm hoping that helps you, Danielle. Yeah, if it doesn't, um, let us know. We'll, we, yep. we, we can always um, follow it up as well. Let us yep. know how you go with that. Um, so another thing you may have seen, and I did um, touch on before was the properties panel on the right. So again, this is actually trying to minimise all that that, that um, screen real estate mm-hmm. that is so vital, just like the uh, Sydney property scene. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Um, so here, this is trying to do everything in a contextual environment. So if I hit the the copy here, um, you can actually see on right, it's going to open up all the panels or all the tools that you would typically use when you have a, a text box open. Yeah. So. Um, again, you should hopefully you be able to use that one, mm-hmm. um, and then that would actually, you know, help speed up. You know, where mm-hmm. do I hide that tool, or was that box hiding under another mm-hmm. uh, panel? You know, all these things you can actually, you know, speed up a lot. Yeah, it's super useful, and uh, yeah, sounds like that worked for Daniela. So glad okay. that, glad that worked. Thank you very much. Yes, good awesome. job, Jason. Oh, thank you. <laughs> um, okay, so next we've got here, and, and this one is quite a good feature, I think. Um, is what we call is we call this one a uh, content aware fit. Fit. So okay. We have so we fill, had fill, <laughs> and now we got. And now fit. we're fit. All right. Yeah. So, um, so here good. I have. Um, so this is not turned on by default, and I will go back and show you how that will be done. Okay. Or can cool. be done. Great. Um, but when you typically drag images in, um, it would have come in at a one-to-one ratio, as you can sort of see here. Yeah. Um, so, so this is obviously happens a lot when you're dealing with high-res images. 
you're, you're moving stuff around, you're trying to get the layout right, you've yeah. got a grid but you don't know if this one's going to be wide or tall or what's going to fit, so you're all constantly kind of rearranging this sort of stuff. Yeah, absolutely. And um, the shortcut key, you know, that, that to to make sure you keep it in proportion and you mm. try to fit it was, was it Command Shift E, I believe. Um, and that one you would uh, proportionalize that. Yeah, up. and so obviously you had to remember that, you have to know it in the first place and you have to yeah, if you haven't, if you don't use InDesign every day, you kind of come back and think, what was the, what was yeah. that shortcut yeah. that I need to yeah. use every time? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, so now they have some tools here. So again, we're just jumping back into properties just so I can show you where it was. I think previously it used to be up the top. Um, so now you have the different options, fit frame portionally, um, you know, fit the content into it, um, different option, you can expand the frame and so forth. Um, here would be center content was that command shift mm -hmm. E. Um, now we have content aware fit. So if I hit that, um, it's going to fit the content. And what it does here, it's not just about just putting it into the box. Mm. It's going to try and recognize through Adobe Sensei. Um, it's going to recognize what that, that the main part of that image is. So if that main part of that image is sitting on the right, mm. it's going to recognize that and pull that into the frame and try to fit that proportionally. You know, using the rule of thirds, all that sort of mm. um, design sort of speak. Right. Um, it's going to pull that in and then hopefully give you a nice layout. So you can sort of see here that the box itself is quite larger, but it hasn't as opposed to just fit it straight in. When mm. I do my, there, there's my, my fit. Mm -hmm. um, it's actually going to do it in proportion into a nice layout. Cool. And again, like we're seeing a bit of a pattern here where there's these kind of it's always good to start out this way, and you still might want to personally play around with a little bit. That's that designer's eye. It can be technically correct, but you might think, oh, actually, this one needs to be played around with a little bit. But it gives you that really good starting point. Yes, it yeah, just I, I saves agree. Saves so much time, and then you can and then you can still play with it. And you just think, oh, actually, what did what did uh, InDesign think I should have done here? Yeah, um, like so, if we went back and we pulled, say, I'm just trying to think of a another object here. So, oops, I can pull that. Uh, let me just delete that and pull that in. Um, so here you can mm. see how it throws it and then boom, it will fit and work out where that, that main aspect is. Right. So, um, yeah, quite, quite a good sort of thing. I think this should be a default and mm -hmm. you can turn this on by default. So if we go up to our preferences, straight away into general um, and you go right down to the bottom. Um, so if we can... Zoom in, Zoom um, in make content aware fit the default frame fitting option. So again, that's going to hopefully save you a bit of time. So you want that on? Uh, yeah, click that. Yeah. Um, as I want to show people this other times, I, I will keep that off. <laughs> okay, cool. Um, okay, so the next, oops, the next thing we want to show is something that has um, come through. Now this has come through in InDesign and Illustrator. Mm -hmm. um, so previously we had Adobe type Typekit. Yep. That has been renamed and it is Adobe Font. Mm -hmm. um, and the whole planning structure around that has been, just been opened up. So it is a lot more easier and flexible. Mm -hmm. You have access now to all the fonts that were available. So 13,000 fonts, everyone. And those with the most fonts wins. Wow. Um, and just you can just put them all in the same design. 13,000 fonts, yeah, strongly recommended. Love that. Yeah, clients will love it. Um, so that's amazing. So, how does that work? It's embedded now within yes. um, Illustrator and InDesign. Yep. So, okay. let me just open this up. I will just pull this out. So, I want to open up my panel a bit further. Um, so, when I go in here, you can see here I have the fonts right above my head. Um, this is my standard fonts that I have available every day. Mm -hmm. Um, so these are the ones that I have accessed and brought into my layout. So I might pull this over. Um, so I have these available every day. So here you can see, see on the right, um, I can make favorites. So you can have mm -hmm. your short list and you hang always- on, Hang on, chalkboard, chalkboard, Comic Sans? <laughs> is it your common use yeah. fonts? No, no, not yet. Oh. Hey, Comic Sans is okay. Okay. Oh, you say so. <laughs> For a certain use. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. I ha um, so you, here you can actually make um, your favorites um, and it's just by s simply hitting the star. Okay. So you always would have um, your favorites like um, Comic Sans. Chalkboard, Comic Sans, <laughs> yep, straight like up. Comic Sans. Yep. Wind Dins. Now, <laughs> wind dins. <laughs> These are the things that will be your go-to fonts when you're 
in Great. a bit of a design funk. So if you work for a, work for an agency or you have your own branding as well, yep. those are the sort of fonts that you would want to just yep. whatever you're commonly using. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So here you can make your fonts. You also have the if you look to the left, you got the similar fonts. So these hmm. fonts under the first um, sort of under the first sort of uh, what do you call it um, area, that's where the fonts that have already been downloaded. Right. So that that. These are ones that you have already highlighted. Next to that is Find More. Mm -hmm. Now, when you hit Find More, um, and if you want to count, you get all 13,000 different fonts. Wow. Um, it's a lot so of fonts. Here, so here I've already had, um, I can actually classify this, so you can see here, so that may not have looked like 13,000 before, um, but I can actually classify and my search criteria, because mm -hmm. going through 13,000 might take a bit of time. That's right. Um, but here you got your serif fonts, your sans serif fonts, um, you got your decorative fonts as well. So you got a whole swathe of different fonts available. Um, so that that's also great. Mm -hmm. um, okay. um, but as I mentioned before, find more, pick out the different fonts that you have available. You got you know fat, skinny, tall, thin. Yeah, um, different serifs options. and sans serif. So, so you can just yeah. sort of filter it out. Yeah, mm. and then all it would be would be to activate this into it um, is you hit hit the little cloud op option with the the arrow down, mm -hmm. um, and then that will add it to your Adobe account. Right. Okay. And does that download the font as well locally? No. No. Okay. No, so no. it stays in the account. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I think a lot lot better, a lot more fonts. Yeah. Better designs. You know, better options. Cool. Um, yeah. So hopefully you don't get lost in a sea of fonts. Um, okay, so now we've gone through InDesign, um, and now we can jump to Illustrator. Jump over to Illustrator. All right, cool. Um, so we're going to stick around for a little bit longer. We're going to go through Illustrator. Um, but don't forget that you can ask us questions by logging in with your Adobe ID. Um, and just ask us anything. If there's something that we haven't covered that you have a specific question for, please feel free to do that. Yes. Let's get into Illustrator. Illustrator. Yep. Yeah. Everyone's favorite. I'm curious, actually, in the in the audience, um, what is your favorite app, or what is the app that you use the most? Because for me, it's Illustrator. I know for a lot of people out there, it's Photoshop. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So yeah, we, we did find out um, during Max that the say the top five apps mm -hmm. everyone have have been using was Illustrator, Photoshop, and InDesign, mm -hmm. Acrobat, and After Effects. So wow, Acrobat sneaking in there. Acrobat still sneaking in. Okay. Again, you do need to uh, collaborate and you That's do need true. to share it with clients. That's so, true. Um, it is quite important. So, wow. yep. Um, XD is one that's always grown as well, so that one's mm. great when it comes down to digital design. Cool. Great. Um, okay, so in Illustrator, the first thing you see here, um, I have options around, like, I think when you hit here, right down the bottom of your toolbar, mm. there's three little dots. If you hit that, it will expand out that panel. Um, what that means is I can customize my panels mm. in Illustrator, which is real. Excuse me, which is really good because um, that means that you know you have certain workflows in Illustrator. Mm. Um, so if you're an illustrative, like you know, a bit more freehand style, um, you would have certain tools and pan pa panels that you would use um, constantly. Um, now you can just hide all the rest and just focus on the ones that you use majority of time because there might be a lot of buttons that you've never hit. Right, for sure, absolutely. Yeah. Um, so now it's simple as just dragging it across. I can add any um, tool that I want into it. Um, and then I can go up here, I can reset, I can have a new toolbar, mm. um, I can manage them. Um, but you know, I keep it general so I just stick to the advanced part. Mm. Very good. We got a, we got a um, couple of InDesign fanatics out there, which is pretty cool. InDesign in the house. Illustrator and InDesign, um, Flash, Baptiste, that's very cheeky of you. Um, <laughs> let's, let's keep rolling with that, okay. but yeah, it's quite interesting to hear what, what people use. Okay. Um, <laughs> so first up, I'm going to show you is the Puppet tool, so Puppet Warp tool. So this did come through last year, so they have mm. improved it. Yeah. Um, so when I hit my Puppet tool, so it's a little uh, pin right in the middle, um, so you saw me uh, mucking around with it in Photoshop. Mm. Um, it is also available in After Effects. Um, so now we have it in Illustrator. And straight up, what the improvements are is that it tries to recognize some of the areas that it will pin in an object. So right. I've already pinned this um, a few times. So we have here, we have the tail, we have the body, the head, 
Um, I will add an extra pin on this. I would add, you know, one for the wings. Now I just want to change the proportion or just the way this uh, bird that we have here fly in. So I want to just mm. change that wow. aspect so you can see how quick and simple it is to move this around. Um, and again, if you did that previously. You have to then, redraw the whole thing, uh, really. Yeah. So, you know, you would try to direct select endpoints, you would move them around, mm. it would never work. You would try to rotate, like here, I can still rotate my, rotate his head um, just a little bit, you know, you want him up. You know, there's whole different ways to do this. Just mm. the subtle differences took a lot longer. Mm. So now it is a lot easier. And you can see on the right, um, you know, I can make my mesh a lot more detailed if I have to. I can expand it out. Um, I can hide the mesh or whatever, hide the pins. Mm. Um, so there are all different ways you can actually do with this. Uh, now, so, um, oops. So you can sort of see here again changing that bird from where it was before um, into this sort of pose is a lot more easy. Mm -hmm. So I think this is great if you're going to do you know typography logos or that you know just moving text around. I know mm -hmm. true typographers will kill me for saying yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but if you had to just expand a little bit or just move it around to just give it that extra oomph mm. design oomph. Um, yeah, that, that's how you would do that. That's pretty amazing, yeah. Yeah, no, I think it's a really good tool. Mm. Um, I really enjoy showing that one. Um, next here is what we have here is we have a branding exercise. Mm -hmm. um, so what I want to show is global edits. So okay. Very exciting. Oh. So here you see we've got our, our logo. Um, I would select, say if I wanted to, okay, I'm looking at my logo, I'm going, Needs a little bit more color. It Need, needs a li little bit more. It's 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 okay. It's nice, but you know, it'd be nice if it had a bit more punch. Mm -hmm. um, on the right, again, the properties panel. It, it highlights that start global edit. So if I hit that, now when I go in, I want to change certain things. I might want to add a bit of color to it. Um, I hit OK. So I've saved that. Um, Sort of happy with it. Um, now, what would you do before that? You would have copied and pasted and repeated that, or you would select mm -hmm. that circle within the logo and do that every time. So you know, now you can see here, it is picking out everything. the whole thing. Mm. Um, what it does, it picks it out in context of what's around it as well. Right. So yeah. that's why um, it's done it quite quickly and easily. So if I was going to say, let me just move something else around, so you can get an idea. I'm, I'm selecting my my lightning bolt, um, and now if I hit start global edit, um, I might just move him around, just change it a little bit. But you can see it's doing That's it to everyone um, in in this layout, um, and you don't have to go through. So wow. yeah, global. So if you're doing branding exercises and that, mm. I think this one would be a helpful trick. So you like presenting sort of something like this to a client, um, and then they sort of said, oh, it'd be great if you could just change that, that one little change. So I would typically I would have to go back and change the original, the original files, yep. go back to the and anything that's been pushed out to it, I'd have to reinsert everything and redo everything. Yeah, if it's a small change like this. You could just do it yeah. on the fly. Yeah, absolutely. Just don't do it in front of the client because you get a charge for those hours. So. <laughs> yeah, good, good tip. <laughs> yeah, so I, I think that that's it's really good. Um, once you get this in a good spot, mm. um, there's another new thing that came through. Um, I think before you had this with InDesign was Shift W. Um, it would highlight the artboard. Uh huh. Cool. So now we have in Illustrator it's Shift F, and now it's going to highlight the artboard again. Great. Um, Really good if you're presenting to the client in yeah. front of them or presenting to your coworker or your creative director or whoever, whoever it is. Mm. Um, and now I can easily cycle through my art boards, have a look, see what works. Um, and then your eye is just fully focused on that yeah. design with no distractions. Absolutely. Anything around it. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's very, that's very cool. Yeah. Yeah, it's a nice helpful tip, that one, I think. Mm. Um, okay, next. Here, I've um, got a lot of love for InDesign in the in the house, which is amazing. I'm there saying. is, yeah, so oh, much. Yeah. Good on you, go strong. Yeah. yeah, it's layout skills. I think layout skills, um, you know, are you know so. What would you say? So important mm. nowadays. You know, there's so much design going out. Good thing with InDesign, it gives you that strong layout base. Mm. Um, you know how you move elements around. So yeah, very glad to hear. Well, there you go. You made Jason's yes. day. <laughs> it's expecting more Photoshop. That's uh, fine. 
Okay, so now we have um, a new update now. Um, I don't know if people played around with, uh, say, gradients before a lot. Uh, you, If you wanted to actually get a bit more fancier, you'll go into that... Um, what would you say? Uh, mesh. Gradient mesh. Gradient, gradient mesh. I remember gradient mesh, yeah. Yes, yeah, so it's like, a, I would like to sort of say it's a bit of a dark art. I've seen people do absolutely amazing things. I've never been able to pull it off. Yeah, I've seen them like just, just like the, the whole facial structure and mm. tone and all that. I've, yeah, it's just like, oh, mm. no. um, Anyway, I don't have that skill, but I do have a new tool that has come through. Um, and so do you. So here we have linear gradient. We've also got radial gradient um, now we have freeform gradient um, so I've hit that I'm gonna do this with points first um, so here you can actually see it's giving me points straight up um, I'm moving these around you can see I can expand out um, I can change my color um, so if I wanted to make this one yellow pull it red you know I can do all these different options and do it quite quickly and easily mm. Um, so that I think in itself is is, is you know, it's game changing. It's so good. It's, I love anything that you know kind of brings back that real playfulness into design mm. as well. So it's it, like I mean it's very quick. You can change things around and find things that feel right. Yeah, uh, yeah, and yeah, because design it's it's not it's not a black and white. It's yeah. Not a pump. I mean, like you do have um, some amazing people who can just throw something together and make it look amazing mm. very quickly but they would stick to a formula that they know of and that works so mm. that, that's where it's good you need to have your box of tricks yep. when, when you, you are designing absolutely um, cool so here I'm moving that around um, so there's this points I can always add in extra points um, and you know I can have new fills available however I want to do it so um, it gives you that flexibility it gives you more texture into your your gradients and mm. your designs mm. um, and gives you that you know that that nice fluidness like I think everyone wants color now um, it's quite important that you have great color into your layouts mm. um, especially with web design and web graphics as well so. yeah we look anywhere online on social as well like Instagram and everything like that it's full of color yeah yeah um, so again the other option is lines so here if I add lines um, you can see it's gonna pull it out give you that curve um, and I can take this to a new level I can still go back into my points I can move them around hmm. um, you know and add different colors as well um, really how far you want to go yeah I mean like that was done quite quickly um, I don't know if it's it's the most wonderful gradient that you've seen on the fly but um, <laughs> but you can actually Add a lot more again. Yeah, absolutely. It, yeah, I think it will give open up a lot, a lot of new options available. Yeah, give that give that tool a, uh, a try out there. Yeah, please do. Mm. Um, I'd love to hear how what your thoughts are. Last one, and we did already touch on this, exactly the same as InDesign is mm. the fonts. Right. So you know you can go into the font menu, um, find more, and there you go. As you can see, no Comic Sans. Just no Comic Sans. <laughs> Didn't mean to font shame you. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's cool. Very bad house. Um, yeah, that's great. Yeah, so um, they're the, the highlight, I think, the, yeah. the, the headline highlights um, in the, them three programs. Mm -hmm. um, there is a lot more available. I think we do share a link, which mm -hmm. is going to go through all the what, what's new in Creative Cloud. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, I'm happy to go further. Um, if there's any questions or did you want us to go further? I think if, else? yeah. So we've got we've, we were talking before that maybe um, if we've got you for a little bit longer, yep. we could um, jump into another app. Sure. As a bit of a bonus um, to everyone, so um, maybe we'll let you guys pick, and we'll, we'll have a little bit of a chat first. Um, what would you prefer to see, Dimension or XD? And we'll do about another 10, 15 yep. minutes on one of the two. So you guys just let us know in the chat, and we'll pick the first or the most chosen or something yep. like that. Meanwhile. Um, what's kind of what we usually ask, as you know, because you've hosted yes. um, the live stream many times. Um, what sort of some parting advice that you'd you'd give to sort of the designers out there? Um, I think nowadays uh, they're like I don't. Previously, people will be put into sort of buckets. So you know, you're a mm. print designer or you're a digital designer or so forth. Um, I think like, and I sort of touched on with InDesign as well. Um, that's not necessary, you know. In design, people have great um, layout skills. It doesn't matter if you're doing um, a print layout or you're doing a UX piece of design. It's mm. all the same, mm. you know. Um, UX is just, you know, user experience in a print layout. Yeah. Um, so I think all that is available. So I mean, 
don't be afraid to just jump outside of what your typical tool set is currently. Mm. Um, you know, play around with your XDs, play around with your dimensions. Where we have worked very hard to make sure it's a lot that ease um, that learning curve mm -hmm. is a lot more easier. So your home panels, your tutorials, and so forth, they're, they're a lot more. Um, you know, have it gives you that ability to adapt to that yeah. new, new program to jump around. Um, it's funny we were joking about um, Flash earlier on before. Yeah. Um, but but yeah, I mean, I I spent a lot of time in Flash, um, and although the app doesn't exist anymore, a lot of the principles. That's still the same, yeah. um, and that's what was int introduced me to web design. A lot of the, you know, CSS and SVG stuff, you know, still carries over. Yeah. Um, you know, and it's sort of like anything to do with the timeline. It teaches you about pace and tempo and easing and all that sort of stuff. And the terminology continues on. So. Yes. Yeah. It is. Yeah. It is that you, you have that strong, consistent base. Yeah. So yeah. again, no matter what tool you are in, you do have a strong base. Um, mm. You know, I think you know, play around. Video is always growing. Mm. Um, you know. Digital design, screen design is growing as well. Yeah, cool. Um, looks like we got some XD love. Um, we'll, we'll, maybe we'll touch on dimension next time. We might get you back because yep. I think this has been a really popular session learning from you. Yep. Um, I'll give quickly just for dimension. So just think dimension is 3D design for right. a 2D designer. Right. So I think that's just a good little... Um, good way to think about it. Yeah. yeah. So it is making it... 3D a lot more accessible to actually do it. So any of your prototypes or something, or yeah. mock-ups, it's a great place to start. Okay, cool. We'll make sure we'll, we'll do a live stream with that as well. So so come back mm. soon and, and um, we'll get you back yeah. at some point. We'll figure it out. Um, but for, for our bonus session today, uh, why don't we jump into XD? Because um, you were showing us some really cool stuff earlier today when we were chatting about um, today's live stream. Yep. And I like it when you do um, XD demos because you get really excited about it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, like a kid in a candy uh, shop. Yes. Uh, no, I think design-wise, it's just so easy. It's so more intuitive in how you design. Mm. Um, just the drag and drop, just the way the design system around XD has been made. They have spent a lot of time making sure they got the base right, mm. and now they're building on that function on top. Mm. So screen design, anything like that, this is just the speed of it. Yeah. is amazing. Yeah. So I, I really do enjoy it. This one had some great updates. Um, one was auto animation, yeah. which we'll quickly show you soon. Um, then they've also got voice transitions. So that one is a cool one. No one else is doing it in the market. Um, this is a really easy way to do it. To you know, And moving forward, I think voice transition uh, design. Mm. Um, I have seen a few talks where it's, it's starting to get a bit of prominence and how do you design for voice activations and so forth? Yeah. So it will grow. Cool. Um, and then we've got plugins. Um, we've got linked assets as well. So yeah, there's quite a lot available. Excellent. Um, so I was going to just jump into how auto animation is done now. Um, it is a lot more simpler than ever before. Um, to and it has been called for for, for quite a while. So right. if I just show you, because it speaks wonders when I click and show people Very how cool. easy it is. So what you're having here is you've got two artboards with the same dots, um, just arranged differently. Uh, okay, so it's the same amount of okay, it's the same dots, amount of assets, yep. dots. Yep. So they're just arranged differently. Um, what it does, it works out what happens between the first state and the second state, mm -hmm. and it just joins the dots. Oh, that's, ah, that's really cheeky. It's like I thought about that. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so how, how would one do something like this? Yeah. So here I just want to pull out a couple of dots just so you can see how it went when it does come back, where they sort of go. So mm. here you can see and then whoop, um, so all it is recognised in the first state mm -hmm. or the first artboard and the second state, the naming convention is the same and that's the important part, the naming convention. So naming convention has in that asset. So this yep. dot is dot twenty seven, and that matches to the other dot. Yeah. Okay. That's Great. all it's recognising. So just dupe your artboard and create another one, okay. and then you show that second state. And just this, just a tip. This will probably be made backwards, right? You probably started with the XD and then pulled it out <laughs> rather than yeah. trying to grab them all and making it work. Yeah, I actually curious. I, I never actually got to see how that was made, but mm. yeah, I would love to. So. Um, Here's another example. Oh, um, this is this one. This one's a bit more, you know, what would actually happen. Um, mm. So if I'm going to hit that. Wow. So it's just picking out the second state. 
and then it does all that all the magic in between. So just to reiterate, there's literally two pages. states. There's just two pages. Like as if you created that in Illustrator and this in Illustrator, and then some magic happened, yep. and you got that whole animation, that gradient, the fade. Yeah. So if it's I move, this, so if I move this dot to say you know over to the left, yep. and you know I know. UXs are going to hate me, um, but you can see again. It's it's, it's making all the des yeah. all the designers that love grids just kind of feel really uh, uncomfortable. Um, and last last quick example here, um, graphs. So th this is actually maybe a real UX sort of environment. Yeah. Um, just showing that you know between the first state and the second state, how that happens. Wow, so it's like super quick to yeah. to put together. That's really really cool. So I can actually do it. I have something already ready to go. So um, if I jump in here, um, what I want to do here, so there are a few different uh, transition skill um, available. Mm. Um, so this one, I want to just show you that drag and the auto animation, how that works. So I can do this quite quickly. Um, I'm just going to straight up dupe my um, artboard to the right. Mm -hmm. um, and now what I want to do is show how this drags over to the right. Um, and then, so that one would, so it's like a moving uh, uh, carousel. carousel, right. Yes. So this is like you're simulating um, someone using an app. Uh, yep. In this case, it's like a music app of some kind, and you kind of create create the animation around yeah, around this. Yeah, they're flicking through the ca uh, catalog of all information mm -hmm. um, and just moving that around. So here I'm just dragging this up. Um, so I've got the second state, and I want to just put my play button in the middle. Mm -hmm. So it matches sort of the, the, the first screen. Um, so here now I've done, so this is my first state, this is my second state, um, now I just want to put that animation into effect. Right. So I will control tab which will flick me from design to prototype. So mm -hmm. you can design prototype and collaborate with clients on this and you can also do the handoff to your developers and so forth. So a lot of functions, mm. um, it's all available within um, CC, so you know just have a go, have a play. It is, you know, people are very smart, you know, very intuitive. You, you'll be able to adapt to it quite quickly. Mm, very cool. Um, so if I say I want to drag here, so I want to pull this over to the right. Um, and so this is just a, this is a transition? The, yep. So I'm just creating the... Connector? I'm sure that's not yep. a technical term, but what is it? Yeah, yeah, transition. Okay. Cool. Um, so what the trigger is, I want to do the drag. Um, and then we mm -hmm. have, as you can sort of see, voice. Yep. Um, and then yeah. we're going to have the action will be auto animate. Yeah, fantastic. So. Yeah, as um, Trav says in the in the chat there. Yeah, there is some auto easing as well. So um, can you explain what easing is? You just yeah. we just saw it in a drop down where you're manually selecting. Yes. But, um, so they had referring they had, to the yeah. Absolutely. Um, it's a good point that you brought up. Um, so they expanded out the um, some of that easing um, mm. function. So easing in, you know, ease in, ease out. Mm -hmm. so, um, snap gives it a bit more of that harder. You know. Just a fast ease at the end. Mm. Um, you got the wind up, so whoosh, right, and then, right, and then the bounce will be something like you may have seen. First in, thing I've ever animated. Yeah. <laughs> so, in yeah. Flash, probably, <laughs> <laughs> probably <laughs> animated that in Flash. Uh, so yeah, so here we're going to just do the simple drag. Um, mm. Now I just want to drag that back because it's. I want the screen to go back and forth. Mm -hmm. So drag from one state to the next. Yep. So I'm just dragging that back. Um, we can. What we can do here, we can hit. Command return, and that's going to open up my play button on the top right. Mm -hmm. um, and then I can just simply drag that across. Um, I see I haven't fixed my copy, so I can easily just pull my copy up into that second state. Um, so if I go back now, so you can see here I've even got my copy to move across. Cool. So again, that didn't take long to do. I know mm. I sort of set it up, and I know when you design something first, you, you design for the layout, then you're going to have to start to think, how's it going to work? Right. So you know, that's where you can actually do that. And if you're going to sell this to a client, um, to help visualize that for them, it makes that sell a lot more easier. Yeah. So. Easy. E easy. In, yeah. I often find for myself as well, um, sort of getting to the prototype stage without doing any necess necessarily any anima animation and then having the prototype sort of in my mm. hand and thinking, well, how would I use this and giving yeah. it to other people to test and then bring it back and think, actually, it'd be really great if the text moved up when I slide it yeah. to the right. And that's how you can discover that 
that, yeah. those processes and those natural interactions. Yeah, because again, like that, that's the beauty of having that prototype tool. So you know, again, it's it's UX user experience. So yeah. you, you actually um, people are tactile with this. Um, we hands on. We we click and touch in. You know, it's amazing when you see people clicking things because they think it should be a button, but yep. they're not. Yep. Um, so yeah, that's part of it, and you can change on the fly. Yeah, you know, Absolutely. we don't have to be stuck down to what we've done. Very cool. Okay, I might show one more. Go one we more. Have time. Yeah, we got we got time for one more. Let's do it. Is this going to be the voice? This is going to be the voice. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> um, so here I've got my home screen. I'm going to drag this off straight away. Um, here I have voice. So I can type in whatever I would like. Um, I don't know if you want me to say anything. Um, just say explore films. So Sounds here, I, this is my voice command that I'm setting up. Um, auto animate is going to go straight to real play. Um, ease in, ease out, um, and I might give it just, oh, I'll leave it to 0.6. So here I can do voice. You can also do voice playback as well, so speech playback. So right. if I explore films and then it goes, there you go, Jason. So I can do that if okay. I may, or Flynn, All right. if I wanted to. Um, so um, if I hit play now, what you do is you hold down your space bar, explore films. It should move across to the second transition. Very cool. So again, yeah, they're the only ones that do it. Um, I think it's really good moving forward. Mm. I, I, I can see an appetite for that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and appetite, good. Appetite, I like it. Yeah. yeah. And then, just quickly, you know, you have your plugins. So there's a lot of new plugins that ha to explore. Yeah. Um, it gives you there's content that you got. Photo Splash, you can get photos from Unsplash. Mm. Um, UI Faces, Google Sheets, you can pull content into your prototypes. Um, Overflow, mm. you can have a look at the whole, whole artboard system and annotate on that. Mm. So much information available. Um, it's really good to have a look, um, find stuff that would work for your workflow. Yeah, fantastic. Um, but yeah, um, hopefully that's enough. Is there anything? Yeah, that's fantastic. I think that's going to take us to the end of today. Oh, thank you for doing the extra bonus oh, bit of XD. Uh, always happy. Yeah, I thought you might be. <laughs> um, and thank you all for, for voting on that. We'll, uh, we'll get Jason back at some point and we'll, we'll dive into Dimension. Yeah. Um, we've also got some other apps. We've got a really exciting session coming up soon um, with Jake Rich who's going to jump in and show us a bit of Rush. Yeah. So that's one of the reasons we didn't run over that today, because we're going to do that very, very soon. Um, and yeah, we'll get Jason yeah. back. We've got a lot of, lot of um, exciting content coming before the year finishes. We are getting to that time. Yes. We might take a short break in December, but not too much. We've got a lot more content coming your way. Um, so big thanks to Jason. Uh, Thank you for coming on. Welcome. Yeah, I really enjoyed it. I always enjoy showing the latest. I love the it. The greatest, yep. It's very um, good. But yeah, hopefully it's Hopefully it's um, useful and helpful in your day-to-day -day work. Mm. Um, you know, because th there might be little things. Just try to keep it in the back of your, um, you know, your catalogue of mm. information that's available, and then hopefully you know it's going to speed up some time for you. And as Jason said, have a play around. Uh, don't be shy. Um, so something we have now is uh, we actually have our own live stream um, subscription. So if you're on the Adobe APAC Live website and you haven't subscribed yet, make sure you do that, um, and we'll just let you know short little email um, every time we go live um, and it's a very good way to stay in touch. Um, otherwise, we shall see you next time. So thanks very much.